Hi guys, this is Destiny. Um, and I wanted to do a video about our, new, our newest book for our reading program. Um, and today we're gonna be working on using our question words to answer questions in the story. So, right now, I'm gonna get our questions down. We're looking for words that start with, I mean, questions that start with how, who, what, when, where, and why. These questions will ask us why something happens, when, was it the present, or was it, or was it the past? Where, where did something happen? We're gonna be learning about different places today. So this question's gonna be very important. Who, who does it happen to, and what, what happens? This story is going to be nonfiction, so we're gonna be looking at facts and real things that happen in the world. And we're going to try and think about why the author wrote this story, what they wanted us to know about. Um, so, let me just pull up the page. Okay. And bear with me for a second. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys. So we're gonna start at the very beginning and we're gonna learn about a continent called Europe. Now, Europe is one of the seven continents that we're gonna be learning about in this next quarter. This book was bitten, written by Rebecca Hirsch and we're trying to think today why she wrote the story, what she wanted us to know. And the title of this story is Europe. We can see it again here on the title page, Europe. It's a trick word. It does not look like it would be spelled this way, but it is. So let's see if we can find it later in the book. This is the table of contents. What kind of information do we find in the table of contents? Hmm, I can answer that question by looking over here. In the table of contents, we're going to find chapter headings uh, that tell us a little bit about what's gonna be on those pages. So, what page would I go to if I wanted to learn more about the heading land and water? Hmm. That's right. We would go to page 21 to learn more about land and water. And if I wanted to learn about an ibex, I wonder what an ibex is, I would go to page 30. When you hear me mention the ibex, put your finger on your nose. Okay. Europe is a continent. The largest pieces of land on earth are continents. There are seven, seven continents. Europe is the yellow continent on this map. Can you find Europe? Yeah, that's right, this is Europe. Now let's count the continents together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven different continents. Europe is a small continent, but it has many countries. Germany, Spain, and Italy are three countries in Europe. Can you find them on this map? Well, this map is pretty small and it's full of a lot of countries. So I made it bigger for us so we can look. Do you see Germany? Here is Germany. Do you see Spain? Spain is over here. And we're looking for Italy. Italy is down at the bottom. It's what's called a peninsula. Okay. People of Europe. This is a heading that tells us what this page is gonna be about. So I'm thinking in my head when I'm reading this page, I'm gonna be learning about people in Europe that might be different. Um, and I also might be learning about what they do. Now I'm gonna read. Each country has its own language, foods, and customs. In Germany, people speak German. They celebrate a festival called Oktoberfest. We have festivals here in Louisiana. Um, what makes them the same or different from this festival in Germany? Hmm, I hear that what word. That was on our list of question words. What makes this festival different than a festival here in Louisiana? Hmm. 
Sometimes at our festivals we dress up, but we don't usually dress up in German clothes unless you're going to an Oktoberfest. These children are dressed up in traditional German um, outfits and they are dancing at the Oktoberfest in a dance that we often don't do. Um, so those are two differences that I see. But a similarity that I can find, something that makes them the same, is that we also have festivals here. We even have our very own Oktoberfest right outside of City Park. Okay, in the United Kingdom, people speak English. The United Kingdom has a royal family. Prince William and the Duchess, oops, I can't read it, it's covered. <laughs> Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge on their wedding day in the United Kingdom. So what I just read down here under the picture tells us a little bit about what we're seeing in the image. So if you didn't know who these people were, you can read underneath the image to find out more. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Italy, people speak Italian. There's a city in Italy where the streets are waterways. There are no cars. People walk on sidewalks or ride boats to go from place to place. How do people get from place to place within this city? Hmm. What do they use to travel in this city? We're using that question word how to answer a question about this page. That's right, they use boats to travel. There are no roads in the city. It's all waterways. So if you want to get around, you have to move around on boats. And there's even a small text, there's a little bit of text here that tells us that they are riding, um, people riding in boats on the river. All right, places to see. There are many things to see in Europe. People visit beautiful parks and buildings in the cities. A colorful dragon fountain in Barcelona, Spain. What language do you think they speak in Spain? Does anybody know? If you guessed Spanish, you are correct. They speak Spanish in Spain. It's a little different than the Spanish that we hear from some of the South American countries, but it is still Spanish. Okay, what else do people do in Europe? They visit Europe's museums to see art. There are famous paintings in the museums. School children at a museum in France. Hmm, why did the children go to the museum? Why do you think? Mm -hmm. They are going to learn a lot about this painting, aren't they? So maybe they went to the museum to learn more about paintings and see the art. They also come to see castles that were built long ago. The Igeskov Castle in Denmark has water all around it. You can see most of it in the picture, but if I didn't have the text under the picture, I wouldn't have known the water went all the way around. So sometimes it's really good to read that text that labels the pictures. Um, I have a question for you. When was this castle built? It was built in the year 1554. That makes it 466 years old. Yes, that is older than George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. This is a very old castle. Land and water, we have a new subject now. This new chapter started here, and this is gonna tell us what all of these pages are going to be about. So instead of being about people, this chapter is going to be about land and water. Europe has forests. Trees grow in the forests and there are many animals, oops, and many animals live there. What type of bears do we have here in Louisiana? That's right, we have black bears, but this is a brown bear and he's looking for food in a forest in Finland. Europe has places that are hot and dry. The weather is good for growing olives and grapes. Where can we find hot weather in the United States? Yep, right here in Louisiana, we have very hot weather. So that's something we have in common with them. This picture says at the bottom, people picking grapes off of the vines in France. So this picture is showing us people in France. 
We wouldn't have known that if we hadn't read the label under the picture. Europe has mountains. It has groups of mountains called ranges. The tallest mountain range in Europe is the Alps. So this right here is a mountain. When you have a big group of them, it's called a range. And the very top of a mountain is called a peak. Now this is very, very high up and you can tell because it's covered in lots of snow. So it has to be very cold. And at the very tops of mountains, it is very cold. Um, let's see, children ski in the Alps in Italy. So these children are learning how to ski in Italy. There are some places in the US where we can learn to ski, like in California, they have a lot of ski um, lodges there. <laughs> All right, Europe has many rivers. The rivers connect cities to the sea. Visitors travel on the rivers to see Europe's interesting places. This says a boat in the Danube River in Budapest, Hungary. Wow, that must be a big river because I see this boat is pretty big and this building is very big. It kind of reminds me of a river that we have here. What river do we have here in New Orleans in Louisiana? That's right, the Mississippi River. Modern marvels. The Malau Viaduct stretches across a deep valley in France. It is the world's tallest bridge. Wow. The bridge has tall columns and cables. The columns and cables work together to hold up the bridge. Remember, columns go straight up and down instead of rows. So when they're saying columns, they're meaning these really long pointed spires that go straight up and down. This bridge is, has a lot of triangle shapes. Can you find the triangles? Let's count the triangles. One, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can also see half triangles on each side, so we can count each of these as two. Go back and see if you can count them again with one, two, three, four. Keep going. How many did you count? That's right, there are 11. Okay, meet an alpine ibex. Did you remember that word ibex from the beginning of the story? An ibex is a wild goat. They live high in the mountains in Europe. These goats are excellent climbers. These are mountain climbing goats. What makes them different from the goats that we have here? If you set the horns, yes, I agree. Their horns of the ibex are very, very long. The goats that we have here in Louisiana or in the United States have shorter horns and sometimes they're curved in a different way. But they are similar in their body shape. We would still know that's a goat. There are just different types of goats that live in different countries. This goat lives in Europe. Um, and these are some words you know. These are some of the vocabulary words that we went over in this lesson. This is a picture of a bear, so I know that this word is probably bear. I'm gonna sound at the beginning, b, and I see the end is r, so I think I'm correct, the word is bear. This is a picture of the castle that we studied. So this word must say, that's right, it says castle. What do you think this word says? Mm, mount. That's right, it says mountain. And this was the picture of the children visiting the museum. What word do you think this is? You are correct, this is the word museum. All right, at the very end of the book, we have something called an index. The index is where you can find information about different topics that are discussed in the book. So it's similar to the table of contents. But the difference is that the table of contents is showing us the chapters in the book, and that's the headings of each of the pages. And the index tells us the list of topics. So if I wanted to look up water, for example, there are two pages that list water. Um, and if I wanted to look up continents, there are also two pages that list the continents. 
if I wanted to go back to the beginning and learn about a specific topic, um, a specific chapter that has a certain type of information, then I would go back to the table of contents and find that. Uh, at the very bottom, this little link right here takes us to more information about Europe and a little bit more about the book that we just read. Um, so I will link this below in case, in case you want to look through some of these other uh, books and articles and find out even more about Europe. But my last question for you is, why do you think the author wrote this book? If you can, I would like for you to write me an answer to why you think she did. Did she write the book to make exciting information about Europe? Did she write the book to tell you what she likes? Is the book a storybook or are we learning something from it? Is it an informational text? Try and answer at least one question from the book with your writing today. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. All right, that's it for today. Thank you. What do you mean?